When I was in high school, uh, my parents didn't want me to get my L's or my P's early because I think they were, um, they were anxious that I would, you know, get in a crash and kill myself or something like that. So therefore, for a long time, if I wanted to get from A to B, all I could do was cycle, okay? So I had my bike and that would get me, that was like a reasonable sort of <laughs> radius that I could ride around. Um, and as a bonus, I was a lot fitter back then. So that was fine. But then when I got into uni, um, I got my L's, got my P's, started driving, okay? But here's the funny thing, when you learn to drive, has anyone actually started lessons at all? Okay, fantastic, thank you, hands down. When you start to learn to drive, at the beginning it's quite overwhelming because you're like, things that should seem simple, like turning <laughs> or braking, you suddenly realize, oh my goodness, like how do I control this thing and not make everyone feel sick because you, you went so suddenly and all that. So driving is a whole set of skills, right? But eventually, um, fingers crossed, you will come to the point where I am, where I'm very comfortable driving. I don't even need to think while I'm driving, even though I, I should. But here's the thing which I'm getting across to you. I've learned many things about driving. I'd say I'm a decent driver. However, <laughs> not even going to dignify that with a response. Um, I am. Um, <laughs> know how to drive, but at the same time, there are so many things I do not know about this one ton object that I am pushing around the roads, okay? I can confidently say to you that I know pretty much nothing about how an engine works, apart from the fact that number one, there is an engine. Number two, it requires petrol, because I have to pay for that. Um, and number three, like it has something to do with um, like little explosions that happen a lot because this is called a combustion engine, which is explosions. That's all I know, okay? Um, if something even tiny is going wrong with this, do not ask me. I'm going to get on the phone to the NRMA as soon as possible, okay? Now, let me ask you this. And it's a, it's a question for each of one of you individually, right? Because everyone, like some people are really interested in this, right? Is a car any less impressive because you can still drive it and have a lot of fun with it without knowing anything about how its engine works, right? In fact, I would argue that is exactly how it's been designed. It's been designed specifically so that you can operate it and enjoy it and you know, be good at it without having to worry about the nitty gritty details, right? You just have to worry about your steering wheel, your gear, all that kind of thing. And all of this is hidden from you, okay? Now, why am I talking about this, okay? Do you remember yesterday, actually the day before, we talked about this guy, do you remember that? And in fact, you've already used it today, okay? Now what I did was, I showed you the sign rule, but I did, you more, I did more for you than show you the sign rule. I actually showed you the engine of the sign rule. We just didn't come up with it. We didn't just say this is true and you can operate it, you can use it without knowing why, I actually showed you where it came from and what makes it work, okay? Now, I could do the same for the cosine rule, okay? Um, in fact, pretty much everything you guys learn, if you want, I can show you the engine. Today though, I actually want to focus on just driving this thing. Um, if you want, I will, I will give you all of the actual working to demonstrate the proof. It's in your textbook, so you can read it yourself if you so choose. But today I just want to put you behind the steering wheel, okay? So I'm not going to prove it for you. I'm not going to derive it is the way we would say it. I'm just going to show it to you and then we're going to get behind the wheel, okay? So you love your metaphors, don't you? I do. I'm a metaphor person. Okay. Pen at the ready, okay? Next to your right angle triangle, if you label your sides A, B, and C, then by Pythagoras' theorem you can say what? Okay. I'm just going to write it from um, right to left in reverse for how you said it. It's the same property, right? Same theorem. So this relates the hypotenuse with the two shorter sides, okay? But we know it only works in right angled triangles. So what happens when you don't have a right angled triangle? Well, we already know this guy. We already know the sine rule. We can use that if we don't have a right angle. But there's actually a version of Pythagoras' theorem which looks a lot like Pythagoras' theorem, but it's just like adjusted to work for non-right angle triangles, okay? So underneath here, next to your non-right angle triangle, I'd like you to write Pythagoras' theorem again, like so. But then if you have a different color there, 
I want you to put beside this, or actually, not just beside, next to this on the same line, I want you to write this extra term. Okay, now, this guy here is, I like to call it, it's a souped up version of Pythagoras' theorem. Like you can see, there's Pythagoras, right? But Pythagoras' theorem as it is, doesn't work for non-right angled triangles. If you don't have a right angle in there, if you've got some other guy like 30, 45, 81, whatever angle you like, to compensate for the fact that it's not right angled, you subtract this thing here. Now, why is it this thing? Well, if you want to answer that question, then you're asking the question, well, how does the engine work? And I can show it to you if you like. But for now, I'm just going to put it to one side. We can still use this even without knowing all the inner workings. Okay? Now, remember I said to you before that an equation or a formula is usually geared to find out whatever the subject is. right? So the way I've written in this is to find the hypotenuse. Okay? This is designed, or it's written rather, to help you find this side over here. So what do you need to find that side? You need the other two sides, A and B, and then you need this guy. This is not just any angle, it's a particular angle. Which one is it? It's the, it's the angle that's opposite. Can you please write that down? When you label this angle here, it's a specific angle, right? It's the angle opposite the side you want. I'm going to write that. Angle opposite the side you want. Okay? So for instance, you could actually know all of the angles in this triangle. You could know A and B and C, but if you want this side, you need to pick that angle. Okay? This is the, si this is the cosine rule, because see, it's got a cosine in it. Okay? So if you want, you can label this. This is uh, the cosine rule. Just like the sine rule, you can rewrite the cosine rule if actually you don't want a side. If you want an angle, you can rejig it to find out the angle. Okay? Uh, let's do this. See this? I'm going to change the subject so that that is the subject. So I'm going to have to rearrange a fair bit. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get it on the left-hand side. I want the subject on the left-hand side. Okay? I'm going to add this weird 2ab cos th c thing. I'm going to add it to both sides. Okay? So that leaves me with this on the left. I also don't want this c squared here, this little c. So I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So it looks like that. Does that make sense? I have added this to both sides. I've subtracted this from both sides. At this point, I only need to do one more thing, which is I don't want the 2ab. So what shall I do? I will, there's no moving. I'm going to do an operation of both sides, which is division. So if I divide through by 2ab, then on the right-hand side, I'll get this. OK? So this is also the cosine rule. But it's geared in a different way to find not a side, but an angle, OK? Now, just like before, you remember I said, hey, look, see that angle? It's not just any angle. It's the angle opposite the side you want. Down in this equation here, do you notice I can swap A and B? If, um, if A was 8 and B was 10, I could swap them around, and it wouldn't make a difference. Do you notice that? Because you, you do the same things to A and B. But C is different. You see he gets subtracted. He doesn't get added. So C is special. Which side is it that makes it special? It's the side opposite the angle you want. Right? Does that make sense? I'm viewing it from the other point of view. Okay? So please label that guy. Just like in the original equation, uh, this side is the special one. This is the side opposite the angle you want. OK. Arif, question? The first one is to find the side, the last one is to find the angle. What's the middle one? The middle one is how we got from one to the other. So it's like just a bit of working, really. Okay.